On the Healthy Human Revolution podcast, Dr. Lori Marbus interviews nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests whose informative and inspiring stories will empower you with the knowledge to transform your life and health. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marbus. And before we get to our two amazing guests, I want to share some exciting news. I have decided to partner with Blueberry Health, who is fully aligned with my desire to share a plant-based diet and lifestyle medicine with everyone that we can reach. And there's so much more to come. So stay tuned over the next few weeks. And I can't wait to let you guys in on our, our big uh, partnership. It's a wonderful. So, but now let's get to our amazing guests. We have Jackie Tarleton and Marcia Prince. How are you guys from Play Chicks, by the way? Very Thank good. You. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. And I can't wait to dive into your story and how you guys met. And please tell us, where does this all begin? Where does the plant chicks journey begin? <laughs> well, I'll start with my end first, how I came into like the plant-based world. Um, I grew up with a mom who was always on a fad diet. And I grew up in the 70s, but I was born in the 70s, let me back up there, but grew up in the 80s. My mom was into low fat, <laughs> fat free, you know, when she sees on packages doing step aerobics was really big, like Richard Simmons, Jane Fonda. She was doing all that while trying to be on a fat diet. So I was this young girl watching my mom struggle with weight loss. And she was either working out or trying to look for processed low fat foods. And as I grew into a woman and here I'm released into the world in my teens, you know, late teens, early twenties, that's what I did. I looked for a gym so I could find a step aerobics class and I was in the step aerobics. Um, and then I was looking for, I was always on like, oh, I can't eat carbs. Um, I would look on packages, but I could eat like snack well, fat-free cookies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. And when you think of the things that we thought were like quote unquote healthy and I was having lean cuisines, like lean cuisine meals, yeah. And mind you, like when I reflect now, I was a really skinny kid. I grew up naturally very thin, but my mindset was like, I have to be on a diet. I have to eat healthy and I have mm. to work out just kind of modeling my mom, watching her struggle. She had four kids and, you know, worked and trying to juggle us. So she was trying to fit her health and fitness somewhere and trying to be healthy. And a lot of times I watched her yo-yo. It went, she went from gaining like being really thin and skinny to gaining over hundred pounds, thin and skinny. It was always this yo-yo mm bouncing back my entire life watching her. And I think I had that fear of one being overweight like that, just watching my mom struggle. And then number two, just like I, I had it in my young age, like she was always eating different than we were, right? So we were eating all kinds of different junk foods, but she would have her little stuff. So like her little lean cuisine at the table while everybody ate normal. And so I was like, oh, that's how I need to eat because I don't want to gain a bunch of weight. So that was set in my mind at a very, very young age that I continued, which is kind of crazy when I think about it. I went from eating the standard American diet to the standard American diet diet. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I went to. And then fast forward, I get into competition training. Um, so obviously I had a passion for health, fitness, and nutrition, and I was actually, you know, like going through nursing school. This is kind of crazy, um, to become a nurse. You know, my mom was a nurse, like a former nurse and you know, my grandma was a nurse. So I come from a long line of like nurses and, um, I thought, okay, I'm going to nursing school. So, but I started doing competition training. So I started training for that. And then I, that was my big aha moment eating whole foods because they're like, you can't eat lean cuisines. You can't eat these snack well, you know, fat free snack well cookies. You gotta be eating real food, like real chicken and oatmeal. So that was my aha moment going into that. Like, oh, I need to give this up. The packaged foods eat whole foods. So I am thankful for that part of my journey because I actually did learn to eat more whole foods. But where it went wrong, it was when, I was eating so much animal protein, it was out of control because obviously the bodybuilder type of competition diet, I was eating five times a day and I was having like three or four egg whites with oat milk for breakfast and I was having fish and I was having steak and chicken. It was like all the basic stuff, very low carb because we only had carbs like maybe in the morning, but throughout the day, it was this like mainly vegetable carbs, like asparagus. You know, I remember having tilapia and asparagus so much. And throughout my competition journey, it was a both beautiful and bittersweet. Um, I got uh, kidney stones. I was going to say, because you're basically doing kind of like the keto diet. 
when you get down to a certain point of your competition and not once you think I would learn from this lesson, but three times I had to go to the, kid, the hospital to get my kidney stones lasered, which I did not mm. know was the thing because I had kidney stones. I couldn't pass them. And I didn't mm. realize eating a high protein diet with low carb would give me kidney stones. And I, you know, it was kind of interesting when I had went there and they had, they were like, basically thinking I was an Adkins person. First, they were like, Have you, are you drinking too much Coca-Cola? Like, because a lot of people who drink sodas, you know, caffeinated sodas, they get kidney stones. And I'm like, no, that's not what's happening here. I, I, I'm a competitor. I don't even touch processed food at this point. Like I'm eating nothing but whole foods. And just because I had a six pack and nice glutes, it does not mean I was healthy. Like the inside of me was not, was very, very unhealthy at that point, but the outside aesthetically looked healthy. So that was again, another aha moment. Like you could look physically fit, but the inside may not be working. So, and here I am on my journey of learning that. And I just remember they sent me to a registered nurse. I mean, a registered dietitian at the hospital. I was talking with her and she said, it's interesting. You have a cleaner version of the Atkins diet. You're, you are very low carb, but they're eating bacon and cheese and you're not having bacon and cheese. You're eating whole foods, but yours is based primarily off animal proteins. And you're actually getting these kidney stones from that. And I, I was like, oh my God. And that was another aha moment that my diet wasn't quite so healthy like I thought it was because I was eating these same basic, maybe 15 foods just to so I could lean out and build muscle. And I literally thought back then if I ate meat, it would go straight to my muscles. <laughs> so it was like the education that you learn as you go through making mistakes, you know, in your health journey. And she just said to me, because at this point, she was actually concerned because of they did all this blood test. And then I don't remember if it was my kidney values or my liver values at that point, because it's been so long ago, it's 13 years ago. But she just said, I'm concerned if you keep going on like this, I see 1% of bodybuilders and fitness people, and they actually have like kidney cancer or kidney disease because of the high protein diet. And I was like, whoa, like I, mm -hmm. that was like, okay, I don't want that. I'm, I'm here to teach people to be healthy. And I had segued at that whole point from competing from being a nurse, I decided I was going to be a health coach. I was going to be a personal trainer and a health coach because I love the preventative side of it. So, you know, it was like, it was like, I remember it was my last semester of nursing school. That was another aha moment. <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. wait a minute. I don't want to like do this. I want to go back and do preventative. <laughs> I think as my, obviously my own journey of this all. So mm -hmm. as I make my way through this entire, uh oh, you know, like all these aha moments, um, I decided I was going to go plant-based because she gave me this paper and I'll never forget. She it said low vegan diet. I looked at it and I read it and I said, vegan. I never heard the term vegan in my entire life. I knew wow. what a vegetarian was. And she said, well, I want you in this low protein diet just for 30 days. And we're going to take your, you know, your blood work again, your labs, and we're going to check how it, you know, your body's, you know, doing. And I'm like, okay. So I look at the paper and I'm seeing fruit and I'm like, no. Ah! It's going to make me fat, the sugar. <laughs> so again, I'm, ha I'm learning and going through this process. And I feel like I can relate to a lot of people out there that are listening because they're hearing all this information, right? I mean, I've, mm -hmm. they've been on the standard American diet. They've been on these crazy processed food, low fat diets. I'm sure they've been on super restrictive diets. I, that would be my competitor. I was super restrictive. And now here I'm going into whole food plant-based and I'm sure that people are freaked out for eating fruit. <laughs> And then literally I was so, I would say enamored with her, just what she was teaching me that I was like, you know what, I, even though I'm a personal trainer, I took one semester nutrition for nursing. I'm like, I need to go get my nutrition certification and actually learn about nutrition because I know how to exercise at this point. I don't know anything about nutrition. And if I think about it, I didn't know anything from the beginning <laughs> when I was at home. So, and I had these horrible habits that I learned from my mom. I mean, no fault of her own. That's what she knew. And that's what I pick up. And I think, you know, here, all of us, you know, you know, we grow up in our families, we pick up what our parents do, whether we realize it or not, because of the influence that they have on us just going in the world. And here I was just going through each little blip, <laughs> but with each one, I feel like the beauty, when I look back at myself, I was able to know I'm going to fix this. I'm going to learn. I was, I didn't just give up or just go back, even though I would yo-yo on some of the stuff. I always had a pursuit in me to keep learning and growing as I went on this. So I got certified nutrition and was and realized, wow, you know, fruit has fiber. Oh, this, you do need carbohydrates for your brain. Like I started connecting the dots and that just like, you know, quenched my thirst to learn more. And then that, you know, I was reading books and going to seminars and courses, learning all about this stuff. 
fast forward here, I am training fitness competitors. I went whole food plant-based. Didn't think I was going to stick with it. I just thought I'd just try it for about 30 days. <laughs> and then all of a sudden she didn't call it whole food plant-based back then. She just called it a you know, low fat vegan diet. Mm. And so I just ate clean like that, did it for 30 days. I felt amazing. I lost 10 pounds of inflammation. And back then, wow. even though it was fit, yeah, I was yeah. fit back then. I had inflammation and I was puffy, like in the ankles, I was had edema and I no longer had edema in the ankles. Cause I was like, wow, my ankles aren't like swollen. So fast forward, long story short, I basically fell in love with this lifestyle. Here I am 13 years later, and now it's a, it's a sustainable lifestyle. Wow. It's not, it's not even, I would consider it a diet. Cause back then I was the queen of fat diets. Give me a fat diet and I'll do it. <laughs> I was like <laughs> worth checking it out. Then Jackie comes to me, this is about five, maybe six years ago now. And she wants to train for a fitness competition. And uh, I was just like, oh, okay. So she comes to me and, you know, I fell in love with Jackie because she's a former, you know, registered dietitian and she loved the nutrition aspect. So that's how our, our world aligned when I trained her. And then I'll let you take mm -hmm. it away, Jackie. Awesome. So hi everyone, I'm Jackie. And I, my story, I grew up in the Midwest, so I'm going to start a little bit about that. So growing up in the Midwest, we had family dinners together every night, and it was healthy, and I say that in air quotes, because we always had some kind of vegetable, and I always prided myself because I'd have a huge glass of milk with my dinner, and whenever we'd have pizza, instead of drinking soda, I'd always have a big giant glass of milk because milk does a body good. It's good for your bones, all that fun stuff. But um, growing up in the Midwest, I was always super active. I always wanted to play outside. I remember my mother would call me in for dinner, Jackie, it's time to eat. And I would literally want to cry because I just loved being outside and I loved playing and just like being super active. I was also a super skinny kid. And my mother was morbidly obese. So I always had like a little healthy fear, maybe not even healthy. I always had a fear of becoming overweight. But again, I grew up in this loving home and we had these healthy meals and everything. And fast forward, like there's not a lot to do in Wichita, Kansas. I always like to tell people. So I started drinking alcohol at a very young age, like around 12 years old. And oh. It was not good from the beginning. Yes, that's very young, very young. Fast forward, I go to college and I go to college in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I go to college there and I decided I'm going to study nutrition because I always, I just, I had a love of nutrition from growing up and eating those healthy meals. Again, I say that in air quotes and just being active and everything because activity was always super important to me. I was a cheerleader from about the time I could walk. And in fact, my senior year that I was cheering, my one of the girls that I cheered with, we decided we were going to have a beer before a game. And we were or a wine cooler, whatever it was. And we were drinking. And all of a sudden, we hear someone knocking on our window. And it was a security guard. So we ended up getting kicked off the cheerleading team. And you guys, cheerleading was my life. So I already started having like consequences of drinking very early on. It was super, super scary. But that also led to me wanting to be more active because I was cheering ever like we have practice every day. That's when I got into like step aerobics and working out and doing all this. And it was just kind of a natural progress progression for me to study nutrition in college. And I absolutely loved it. After I graduated, I ended up doing my dietetic internship in the Tampa area. And the dietitian, what my mentor dietitian, she was a vegan back then. Whole foods, whole food plant-based was not a terminology in the early 90s. I'm dating myself. So Lori, we're about the same age. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so she was vegan. And she introduced me to like Dean Ornish, T. Colin Campbell, Paul Waltz, mm -hmm. and like all of the grandfathers of plant medicine, wow. right? Yeah, so I've been following these guys for year, literally like three decades. And I tried being vegan because in college, I actually ended up going vegetarian. And when I called my mom to tell her I, I was not going to eat meat anymore, she, she wasn't surprised because she remembers when I would sit at the table and we were having chicken. And she said that I used to like almost cry having to eat chicken. I don't remember this, but I always, I just never really liked meat that much. So I was vegetarian 
from college, like 18 for like a decade or 14 years. And my mom wasn't surprised, but I tried being vegan in the early nineties. And like I, like I said, like I loved my dairy. There were some evenings where wine and cheese was my dinner, like Mm -hmm. literally lived on it for many, many, many days, many evenings. And so I just couldn't, I, I couldn't, again, in air quotes, I couldn't give up the dairy. Dairy was like my nemesis, meat, fish, no problem. But dairy, I loved it. I couldn't do it. So I did my best. And I also had cholesterol issues starting in college. And I would notice that when I would clean up my diet, I'd eat less dairy, I'd exercise more. I noticed that my cholesterol would come down. And this was also before like the board certifications and lifestyle medicine were around. But I always knew from my own personal experience that lifestyle mattered. And now many years later, we have board certifications for physicians, nurses, physician extenders, dietitians, health coaches, all around lifestyle medicine and the power of nutrition and fitness and sleep and all the good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So fast forward, I practice as a registered dietitian. My mentor dietitian introduces me to amazing people and really like molded and has a very big place in my heart. I still stay in touch with her today. It's so incredible. And she's still super involved in the plant-based world, which is amazing. But fast forward, I practiced for a couple of years as a dietitian and I end up getting into medical sales because I would see these like cute reps coming in and out of the hospital in their suits, bringing cupcakes, bringing fun stuff. I'm like, I could do that. That seems like it would be so much more fun. So I got into medical sales and I kind of lost sight of myself. I decided money was more fun. I got to travel and see the world. I met so many amazing people, did a lot of amazing things in my two decades when I was in the healthcare or like in medical sales, but I kind of lost a part of me. While I was in medical sales, I decided because I was still working out a lot and eating fairly healthy. But I lost sight of that. And I decided that I wanted to start eating meat again. So around the age of 27, I 20 or maybe 30, maybe around 30, I started eating meat again because I wanted to build strong muscles, just like Marcia was saying. Like I was thinking those protein, and I'm a dietitian, mind you, I know better. But I was thinking like the meat and the protein is going to help me build muscle, get leaner and all that fun stuff. Well, One of my trainers, he actually wanted me to compete and I always, always wanted to compete, but Lori, I could not do the training because I couldn't stop drinking alcohol. And you, Mm -hmm. yeah, it was really, really hard for me because I was drinking a lot. Mind you, I was also whining and dining my doctors a lot. Like there were so many things going on. Well, fast forward and my best girlfriend from high school, her youngest son has just, he just graduated high school and she, they came out to Florida because they like to do fishing trips and stuff. They came up to the Keys and I live in Miami. So I was able to hang out and see them. She was training for a fitness competition. And I started thinking because four years ago, four years prior. So this is 2016. She came into town, but in 2012, May 15, 2012, to be exact, I finally just had enough. I was drinking too much and I just wasn't happy. I had like this big empty hole in my heart, basically. And I decided to stop drinking. I have been sober. It'll be almost 10. It'll be 10 years this year, which is crazy. Amazing. I honestly, congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) But one of the biggest things, like I thought I was going to maybe learn how to drink like a normal person when I was learning more about myself. But what I didn't realize is I was going to learn me, learn about me, go back to my passions of lifestyle medicine. And now my girlfriend's in town. She's training for a competition. I'm like, Jackie, you have no excuse now. You're not drinking. You've always wanted to train and do a competition. Do it. There's no time like the present. So I'm texting back and forth. I'm talking to my girlfriend. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it plant-based. I just started going back to the plant-based IPBNC, the International Plant-Based Nutrition and Healthcare Conference. I'd gone to some lifestyle medicine conferences as well. So I'm getting more into it. I'm finally hearing about plant-based. So I'm going back and forth with my girlfriend. I'm like, I've got to find a coach who knows what she's doing, who can train me how to go to the stage plant-based and knows what she's talking about nutritionally. Because 
coming from a dietetics background, I, I know how bad it can be on your body and I wanted to do it as safe as possible. So my girlfriend sends me this chick's Instagram and I'm scrolling through her Instagram. She's beautiful. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, she's hot. She's got all the certification. She's been a fitness, a bikini fitness pro. She did the Epornell nutrition, the nutri- plant-based nutrition certification. She's done all these things. She's been on all these magazine covers. I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, let me check out this girl. So I sent her a message and Lori, she got back to me like right away. Mm-hmm. So get on the phone and this girl is Mercy and Friends. So literally Marcia ended up training me to go to the stage. It was the most magical experience. I literally went on stage the day after my 48th birthday, my 48th birthday. So literally on my 48th birthday, I do this amazing photo shoot with Marcia and I'm like in scantily cloud swimsuits. And I looked (laughs) amazing if I can say it to myself, although I didn't totally see it then. But it was the most (laughs) incredible experience. And fast forward, my husband, I was still in medical sales at this time. My husband knew because I had done my well coach certification and he knew I wanted to get into coaching. And he's like, Jackie, I know you are not doing what you love and you really want to get into coaching. So if you want to do this, do it. We'll make it happen. So I call Marcia. I have a business coach at the time, but I call my competition coach, Marcia. I call her. I'm like, hey, Charles is saying that I can go into um, doing coaching, like doing that full time. What do you think? Like, can you give me some pointers? And do you know what she said to me? She goes, would you want to go into business together? I'm like, what? <laughs> of course I would. You're my like role model and hero. So that is literally how Plant Chicks was born. Mm-hmm. So she thought of the name Plant Chicks. It, I was going to Dallas to work in January of 2018. She picks me up from the airport. She's like, what do you think about the name Plant Chicks? I'm like, what? That is so good. And Marcia, tell the story of how you came up with Plant Chicks, which I thought was so freaking phenomenal. (laughs) Yeah, well, people would always see me post like plant-based meals on social media. And then someone have reached out to me. They're like, oh, you're that plant chick. And I'm like, that's right, I am. (laughs) I'll own that. Yes, I am. And so I was like, oh my God, Jackie, we should name it Plant Chicks because we were, we were, it was from October to, uh, 2017 to December, we were trying to think of how we're going to do our business, what we're going to name it. So she flew out in that January, 2018. And that's when it was official. Like I picked her up in the airport. I'm like, what about Plant Chicks? You know, wow. and then we can coach women because as a health coach myself, I was only coaching women and there was such a need and such a market for it. And I feel like, you know, women can relate to other women, like they're going mm-hmm. through things. So I just had that connection with them. And maybe I got it from just from my mom, like watching my mom do her thing and struggling. Maybe I had that part of me that wanted to help my struggling mom. I always think of that, you know, it's kind of crazy when you think of that story, like the psychology of it. And so, yeah, so Jackie and we were, I was in my forties, Jackie was late forties, you know, and then we're just like, we tended to, you know, gravitate and women gravitated, gravitated to us that were like late four, you know, eight, well, I would say late thirties, early forties, early fifties around that age range. But it was beautiful. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is like so meant to be because <laughs> we are getting the woman that's tired of the fad diets. They've mm-hmm. done the fad diets. They've already done the leg work on, you know, all these crazy workout routines. They want lifestyle. They want sustainability. Like how can I eat healthy? Like have my cake and eat it too. You know, I want to eat healthy, but I want to have some treat meals. How do I incorporate this? How can I work out without killing myself in the gym and maintain a, a normal physique, not a, like a competitor physique, but just a normal every day that's healthy, that's you know regular weight. Because there are women that are tired of the fad diets and being sold and, you know, what's going on with the crazy marketing. And this is getting worse. I would say that it, being a fitness oh, person as yeah. a health coach for 18 years, I've watched the evolution of it. And I just feel like it's out of control then you see these Instagrammers that are photoshopping their bodies. And I just can't imagine what it's doing to young girls. Cause I mean, I just watched my mom and now I think I never had social media to go on there to look at these women. I would really be intimidated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's a really big issue is what are we doing to our younger women? Exactly. So like my daughter's 28 and luckily she didn't ever have a real interest in being in social media. So I feel like my kids they are 27, well, 28, 26, 24 this year. You know, like, I feel like I just kind of barely missed that where it's deep, really deep into their life and everyone's on it. And 
my kids are like, mm, I'm on it more than them. I always told them like, I'm, uh, if you're on social media, one, I'm going to have your password as long as you're in my house and I'm paying for your phone. And two, I will stalk you. And I'm happy to do that. I will tell you that's how it is. And they're like, no part of that. So I'm sure there was other things, Snapchat and stuff they did that. But I'm really curious, what is the journey of a woman who is interested in joining your, your program? Like what, what should they expect and what should they be looking for? And like, tell me what that looks like. Yeah, so our Plant Chicks Life Set, we've got a couple of things. We have our Plant Chicks Tribe. This is open to all women, the plant curious women, the part-time plant chick, and the plant-based pro. It's open to all women who just have an interest in eating more plants. That's our free group on Facebook. So Plant Chicks Tribe and Plant Chicks, there's no K in chicks. So P-L-A-N-T-C-H-I-C-S, Plant Chicks Tribe on Facebook. But our really, our, our lifestyle program that we're so incredibly proud of, it's called Plant Chicks Lifestyle. And this incorporates food, fitness, and friends. So we've got our, so many different workouts. So we're constantly adding new workout programs. March 28th, Monday, March 28th, we're starting a three-week program called Intensity. It's literally 10 minutes of exercise every day. So this is a really good way for people who are wanting to start a workout program or start working out. This is a really good introduction to working out, or if you just want to add a little extra to your workout, this is also a really good program. But we've got so many different workout options in our Plant Chicks lifestyle from high impact, low impact, high intensity, low intensity, yoga, Pilates, meditation. We're doing so many different programs in there. We also have mindset journals because one of the things that Marcy and I've learned it, through our journeys, you can have all the knowledge in the world, all the fitness knowledge, all the nutrition knowledge, all the medical knowledge. But if your mind is holding you back from implementing these things, it's the biggest thing that we've got to work on. So we've got some really incredible mindset stuff that you can do in Plant Chicks Lifestyle. And then we have our signature plant plates that are also included. So we've got four different books, like eBooks of plant plates included with over a hundred recipes. We're constantly updating our exercises, our workout programs, the recipes and mindset information, and also meditation. We're constantly updating our Plant Chicks lifestyle. And the best way to find that is from our website, plantchicks.com. And literally this is not just for women who want to be plant-based. This is for all everyone, because regardless of your dietary preferences, regardless of your dietary needs, you can always incorporate more plants onto your plate. And that is how you're going to start leveling up and feeling better. Marcy and I didn't, well, Marcy did do it overnight. I did not do it overnight. It, I baby stepped back into plant-based eating. I was vegetarian many years and I went back to eating meat and then I was plant forward. And now I am plant-based and it feels so amazing. So there's so many different ways to incorporate more plants into your life. And we're here to support women over 40. We have younger women as well, but like Marcia said, we're drawn towards women. We're drawn towards to women who are on our journey because life does change in our forties and fifties and beyond. So we really are focusing on women 40 and older who are motivated, who want to make a difference, who want to feel better, have more energy and find that sustainable lifestyle. Yeah. You won't find a quick fix here because people are always like, mm. how can I lose 10 pounds fast? We already know it's mindset. It's not how much you have to lose. It's, it's your healthy habits leading is what is com oh, say compounded. What, what is in front of you, right? When you look at yourself, it's like, what are your habits? So Jackie mm. and I really go into lifestyle and sustainability and try to get people off the diets. The, the bad diet culture. Yeah. I, I talk a lot about occasions. Like there's this little three pound organ between your ears. That's responsible for everything. So, um, but I feel like that mindset's a really important piece because when I see patients, they do so good. Oh my gosh. They will lose like 20 pounds, 30 pounds. It doesn't matter. They hit a certain point. And then like, there's this self-sabotage mode that comes on, especially women. Cause they, I don't know, there's so much to that. And I've really, 
that's honestly, this is why I started this podcast six years ago. Cause I was like, now why can't someone lose 200 pounds and keep it off? And then I have another one who struggles to eat well and lose five pounds and goes right back to the old habits. Like what is going on? So what have you learned? Like, what do you feel like those who really struggle? Like, what are, are there any steps to help them figure out what may be tripping them up, but they keep struggling with the same cycles and addictions yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of the psychology that, you know, goes back to how maybe you were raised or maybe you could be an abusive relationship. A lot of like behind each woman's diet and fitness exercise routine is a story, right? It's like, we have to get down. What is the story? When you find out what your story is, you can, you're able to break past that chain because it's education. If you're not educated either in what's going on, like a lot of my clients, like, just give me the stuff and they want to go do it. Right. I'm like, go mm-hmm. On our coaching call, I'm going to explain why you're doing this. Mm-hmm. I'm not just going to say, here, eat this. And then you run off and try to eat it to lose your 10 pounds only to fail, right? Because you don't understand the psychology behind it or the education behind why you're eating that way. So education is big with Jackie and I. We literally try to break it down and educate people and, you know, and just also, you know, have them write down, what is your why? Like, why, why do you keep sabotaging yourself? Why are you doing this? Like making them stop and think. Because if they can't stop and think about it, then how are they going to process it, right? They're just going to go back to old habits. And we know that brain has a lot to do with it. You know, like neurons that wire together, fire together. If you're super negative all the time, and that's your go-to, which I was super negative Nelly too. And, you know, you have to learn to rewire your brain to a different pattern and, and being have, thinking positively, thinking uh, I'm healthy, I'm beautiful. That's hard when, you, when you've been thinking like, oh, I'm ugly, I'm fat, I'm this, I'm that. If you've been telling yourself for years, because think about it, you, you talk to yourself more than anybody in any given day in your head and really your thoughts become your actions. So if you don't think you look good or feel good, it's going to present in your physical body, right? And then you're going to have all these roadblocks, but when you can have someone believe in you before you believe in yourself, that always helps. I always feel like having a coach, I have had coaches before and are you in a therapist and then when they believe in you. You're like, oh, well, maybe I can do this because it's always great to have a teacher in your life. Even coaches need coaches, right? Mm -hmm. And people hire us to coach them to change their mindset, to make them think because someone will have their aha moment. You know, I've had many aha moments in my life. And if someone can bring that to you so you can change your patterns and your thoughts going forward, that's winning. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. And a couple other things just to piggyback on what you said, Marcia. Like, Lori, you also hit the nail on the head with addictions because addictions are very strong and it's not always the alcohol. Like, I actually feel blessed that my addiction is alcohol because I don't have to have alcohol to live. So that was like easy. I mean, it wasn't easy, but it was fairly easy for me to do. Marcy and I both have histories of eating disorders as well. Like, I literally, my parents almost pulled me from college because I was anorexic and I wouldn't eat. The one semester in college that I didn't drink, it's because alcohol had too many calories. So there, I've actually overcome an eating disorder. And that is a lot harder to work on because we have to have food to survive. But again, like what Marcia said, you've got to figure out what your story is and we can always rewrite our story. So we have like the habit loop. And I know you're familiar with the habit loop the Q routine and reward, we one of our journals is specifically on that habit loop and people can start creating, like figuring out what the reward is. If they want to stop eating that cookie or having that frappuccino at two o'clock in the afternoon, what's the cue that like triggers that and how can you change it? And what's another reward that you can have that makes you happy and it's rewarding and makes you feel good. And these are things like, It can take weeks to figure out what that right reward is, but we've got these mindset journals where you can work through these things. You can also do coaching, but the power is in working, putting in the work, putting in practice, figuring out what it is. And then also community, having those women to lean on in our Plant Chicks lifestyle, in our Plant Chicks tribe. Marcia and I, one of the reasons we created the Plant Chicks tribe is because our husbands, they didn't, didn't necessarily eat the way we ate when we created plant chicks. They both have had an evolution since we started plant chicks, but they're not fully plant-based right now. They're both plant strong, but they're on their journeys. And Marcia and I wanted to create a safe 
and loving space where women can come in and like lean on one another to help level up and feel better. So I really do think like working through these addictions, rewiring the brain, becoming aware, awareness is key. Mm -hmm. And once you become aware, you can start making changes and then leaning in on the other women. It's just, it's like the, the perfect storm in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a, a lot of good work. Um, Dr. Jed Brewer, he's an addiction psychiatrist. He's also plant-based, a good friend of mine in Rhode Island. And what was interesting, um, he wrote a book called Unwinding Anxiety. He has a couple of apps called Eat Right Nails, but he speaks to that the cycle, right? It's the habit loop. It's the... Um, the reward and dismantling the habit is really important is removing the reward. So then that just kind of falls upon itself is when you're looking at unhealthy habits and then building the healthy habit, like you said, what is the, the reward that will be part of it? There's really work with like BJ Fogg. I love that stuff. It's like, it's the piece that I don't think doctors are trained in. So we struggle to help patients understand why they're doing the behaviors that they're doing, but that is some really good stuff. I love that so much. Oh my goodness. So as far as, are there any like really fun transformational stories that you like to share that you guys worked with? I mean, we really have so many transformational <laughs> stories, like from the inside out, really. I mean, mm. from someone's lab work, you know, that had high cholesterol, high blood pressure. We had this one guy, his name was Stan. Now, remember Stan and Jody, they're such an, a crazy a husband and wife team, but he came to us first. And he had been plant-based, well, actually back a long time ago, 30 years ago, vegan. He was a vegan a long time ago, then started eating normal stuff again, gained 50 pounds, and then came to us and wanted to go plant-based. And we were like, all right, come on board. And he literally jumped on board, decided he's going to do it, started training. It was the first time in his entire life, we're talking like almost 11 or 12 months later, that he had a six pack. He was a chubby kid, an overweight adult, an obese you know, like a senior, because I mean, obviously he's in the 60s at this point, that he had a six pack for the first time at 60. Yes. I was like, wow. And so he was so proud of it. He was like, I'm going to do a fitness competition because his intention was mm -hmm. to get healthier. And he was like, I'm looking good. So mm -hmm. he ended up doing a fitness competition. His wife saw his progress, decided to join. And not oh, only did they awesome. change externally, internally their blood work, like his cholesterol was down, his triglycerides, they were all within normal ranges, which was super fascinating. And, you know, I went out there, I flew out to see them. I had to, I trained them for a year online that when they went to South Carolina to this fitness competition and they both won their class, which is so cool. So that was one of my favorite stories. And a lot of fun. I'm also a story with my cholesterol because my cholesterol runs high. But I'm also very blessed because my body responds very nicely to lifestyle. So once I did cut out saturated fat and you guys, for those of you listening, even if you're plant-based, if you're eating a lot of coconut oil or you have a lot of saturated fat in your diet, that can still elevate your cholesterol. So just because you're plant-based doesn't mean your cholesterol can't be high. I'm one of those people. So I have to be very, very mindful and then also exercise to bring up the good cholesterol, right? So my cholesterol is a testament to this lifestyle. And also we've got um, Wendy. When, Wendy is a transformation. We call it transformation in the plant chicks land. But um, Wendy, she met us. We did a, a, um, a challenge with Dr. B who wrote Fiber Fuel. And she embarked on this plant chicks lifestyle, fiber fueled, fiber -fueled lifestyle. And she literally was just hoping that she would like gain more energy and feel better. And her side effect was less inflammation and we'll have to send you her before and after, well, before and during pictures, because mm. this was just like an unexpected perk where she was able to thin out a little bit, lose that infl inflammation. She also felt better. She got energy and she put the focus back on you. So just like when you go on an airplane, when they do the safety information, they're like, put the oxygen mask on you first and then help the other so you can help the other, your dependents. And it's the same thing when it comes to us as women. We're nurturers. We want to take care of our family. But if we don't take care of ourselves first, then we're not going to be there to be able to take care of our family. So it's really, really important that you, and I'm talking to the ladies out there, that you do learn to put yourself first so that you can show up to be the best version of you for the family. 
I, I think I can't tell you how many times I've said those exact words. I definitely feel that's a really important message because so many times women don't, right? Like you said, they're focusing in on their kids and they're running around and they're they're being the chauffeur, they're working a full-time job, they're doing the laundry, they're la da 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 And then they're like, I don't have time to eat healthy. Gosh, I guess earlier have time to wake up and get everyone out the door without literally going crazy. Um, yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. But I always get asked, trust me, is the craziest thing. The, the comments that always come to me, if I don't ask this question and every podcast is, what do they eat every day? <laughs> that is literally the most important subject of this entire podcast is, okay, ladies, what are you eating every day? <laughs> Okay, I'll start like I, every morning I have a smoothie because it's just super fast, right? So that's kind of my go-to because you can have fruit, greens, your healthy fat. You can add a little half a cup of oatmeal in there to sustain you for different type of fiber. So, you know, it just kind of has everything and that's my go-to. I usually will have a mid-morning snack and that could be like a banana or an apple, some piece of fruit and just a little handful of nuts. I don't eat a ton of nuts, but maybe like, you know, just a little tiny quarter of, even not even a quarter cup maybe but just a handful. And then lunch, I'll have a large salad, tons of veggies. Um, I always do like an oil-free dressing. I look for fun ways to create like an oil-free dressing and you can do like a tomato one or salsa. So I just have fun with that. And of course you have beans on there because everyone's worried about protein, but you know, there's protein in all types of, you know, fruits and vegetables, believe it or not. I mean, a lot of people like freak out. They're like, what? <laughs> I mean, of course there are some, you know, I would say some vegetables that have higher protein content in it, of course. So like beans and lentils and stuff like that. But, and then in dinner, you know, I like to have something like, like lentil, I can make a lentil meatloaf and have, you know, some mashed potatoes and some greens, maybe a side salad. But I feel like, you know, everything that I've eaten in a standard American diet, I've actually made it whole food and healthier, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Jackie, you got to share. <laughs> yeah. So breakfast is usually going to be either a smoothie, which with a bunch of greens. I almost always have a frozen banana in there because I love my bananas. Maybe some berries, like blueberries or whatever, because for the antioxidants, and it's also good for anti-aging. And then a healthy fat, like ground black seed, chia, or hemp seeds, depending on my mood. And every once in a while, I'll throw in beans if I want a little extra protein. So like a chickpea or a mung bean, because they're, they don't have a strong flavor profile. So that would be a smoothie. If I don't do a smoothie, then I might do like an oatmeal. I love oatmeal with peanut butter or almond butter and some kind of frozen fruit. I always put in the frozen fruit because it like, cools down the oatmeal. So that's, that's one of my breakfasts, like my go-to breakfast or like an overnight oats. Then lunch normally is like a big salad too. And you guys, I am, I, I like healthy in a hurry. I don't like being in the kitchen too long. So I actually love a lot of the pre-made salads from Whole Foods. So I'll get one of those, but I'll always add greens, like more kale or spinach or the protein greens. I'll do that. And then I'll use like half a bag of those pre-made salad mixes. And then I'll cut up maybe some tomatoes or if I'm feeling kind of fun, I might do some onions because I love onions. And then my dressing, one of my go-to dressings is using a hummus and adding water in it, stirring it up and using that as a salad dressing, super easy peasy. And then dinner lately, I've been super into a tofu scramble. So I use super firm, high protein to, uh, tofu sometimes, it's sometimes they're high protein. But I crumble that up and there is the best like frozen mushrooms from Trader Joe's. It comes in the yellow package. And then I pick any other mixed veggies from any grocery store and maybe even throw in some, some more spinach. And I usually put in some beans like lentils or something. I love that lentil brick from tofu, from tofu, from Trader Joe's as well. And that'll be a dinner. But I literally, I'll make like a big pot of that tofu scramble and I'll eat on that for like, three days. So it's easy peasy. And I always have coffee <laughs> like in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, I love smoothies. Even when it's cold here in Colorado, um, I'm eating the smoothie regularly. So that's, that is a definite go-to. I just feel like if anything, every the rest of the day goes haywire and I can't even eat or whatever, um, I got all those stuff, good stuff in. So that's amazing. Yeah. So 
Well, thank you, ladies. I know I, I promised just an hour. So I thank you for your time. That was been incredible. And your story is inspiring. And I love that you're working with women because this is, this is a tough, this is a tough middle age. Uh, it's just, it's different, right? And so um, <laughs> we need all the help we can. The sisterhood needs to band together. So thank you for being there and leading the way. And you guys look incredible. Your energy is amazing. So I'm so excited for all of you guys in your future. Um, and hopefully guys listen up, check out plantchicks.com. We'll put links in the, in the show notes and thanks for listening. But thank you guys again. Thanks thank for, for having us. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed that video. Before you go though, please hit the subscribe button and the alert button. So you will be notified whenever we upload any new videos. Now, if you'd rather listen to the podcast, you can find it on all the major platforms such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and even Spotify. Now, if you're looking for more resources on how to start a plant-based diet, sustain a plant-based diet, exercise, recipes, anything regarding wellness, we've got you covered. Check out healthyhumanrevolution.com. And again, thanks for watching.